So the RTX 50 series is finally starting to get close to its MSRP and become available, but just as that's occurring, well, it looks like the Super Series is already getting leaked. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now, you can get a Windows 11 CD key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 11, just search Activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. So a little while ago, I covered the RTX 50 Super Series and I gave you guys the specs for the RTX 50 70 Super and the RTX 50 80 Super. However, it looks like a long time leaker with, well, a very good track record, pretty much just backed up all that information and even added some more info of his own that I was unaware of. And I'll be honest with you guys, when this guy talks, it's pretty much almost guaranteed to be true. He has had a crazy good track record when it comes to the accuracy of his leaks for NVIDIA products specifically. So let's take a look at this information and see how it stacks up with what I've already covered. We can see here that he has the RTX 5070 Super and he does list it'll have 6400 FP32 cores, 192 bit GDDR7, 18 gigabytes of the stuff and it's running at 28 gigabits per second and 275 watts. And if I actually take a look at the information that I shared not too long ago, well, I did have pretty much almost identical specs. Now I do have the boost clock, which is not listed here, although that's not necessarily been finalized at this point in time from what I understand. However, we got the same 50 SMs, which does actually lead to the same core count that he listed because it's 50 times 128. That's how you get the actual core count. And I did list the same 18 gigabytes, although I had it running at 32 gigabits per second. And it looks like he's stating that it will be 28 gigabits per second. And I believe him. That's probably correct. And I was probably wrong on the speed of the GDDR7 memory. And that's probably going to be enough as well. And even down to the board power, I had 280 watts. He's got 275 watts. So it looks like that's pretty much going to be the case. And the RTX 5070 Super with 18 gigabytes of VRM is a very interesting thing. And to see him back up all that information gives me a high degree of confidence that this will be an actual product. And I want you guys to let me know in the comments below, do you think there will be an 18 gigabyte version of the RTX 5070? And would you buy it if it was the same price as the current cards? In fact, let me know in the comments below, would you wait to buy that rather than buying a 12 gigabyte RTX 5070 today? However, there is some information, like I mentioned earlier, that he divulged that I was unaware of, and that's the RTX 5070 Ti Super. I had no idea this would be a thing, and it looks like it is going to be a thing. So I did go ahead and add it to my chart here, and it looks like this is gonna have 70 SMs, which is a pretty big increase from the 50 on the RTX 5070 Super. However, it's the same as the RTX 5070 Ti. So where's the performance increase gonna come from? Well, it looks like it is likely gonna be running at a higher clock speed. I do assume it will be very similar to the RTX 5080, although it could even be a little bit higher than that. And then we will be seeing 24 gigabytes, that's right, 20 four gigabytes on the RTX 5070 Ti Super running at 28 gigabits per second on a 256 bit bus for 896 gigabytes per second, which by the way, gives it the same amount of memory as the RTX 4090. And with a tiny overclock to that memory, you could also get it to run at the same speed as well. And considering how much cheaper this is gonna be, that's pretty crazy to hear. Now this will likely also have 48 megabytes of cache still, and it will have a TDP of around 350 watts. So it is gonna go up 50 watts versus the 5070 Ti non-super. Now I do also have the RTX 5080 Super and the RTX 5090 Super, but considering that Cop87 Kimi over on Twitter, which I will have linked in the description below, has not yet confirmed these specs, I do want you guys to take those with a grain of salt. And let's move on to the actual performance and the release date of these two that have been effectively confirmed considering how good his track record is. So let's take a look at the RTX 5070 Super. This thing should be coming in at the same $549. 
However, it should give you around 10% higher 4K gaming performance than the RTX 5070. And considering that it has 18 gigabytes of VRAM, well, to be honest with you guys, this will actually be a card that I think is good enough for 4K gaming with the use of DLSS, and especially if you're okay with using frame generation, then it'll definitely be good enough for 4K gaming this year. You'll no longer have to choose to turn down a bunch of settings because of the 12 gigabytes of VRAM. This will honestly be, I think, a pretty good 4K gaming card, although I do suspect most most people will be trying to target 1440p, or if you do use 4K, you'll be doing something like performance DLSS upscaling, which by the way, still looks really, really good. In fact, I would say performance DLSS to 4K does actually look, I would say significantly better than native 1440p in most cases. So whatever you wanna do with your card, 1440p, 4K, whatever, it should be able to handle it with 18 gigabytes of VRAM, and it should be releasing in quarter one of 2026, I believe, although that is yet to be confirmed. And then the RTX 5070 Ti Super, this will definitely be capable of 4K gaming. I mean, coming in at the same price of $749, but giving you a significant performance uplift versus the RTX 5070 Super. And it should actually be very close in terms of performance to the RTX 5080. But again, imagine getting a 5080 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM for a $250 savings, as by the time these cards release, stock, you know, supply, and all the pricing should no longer be an issue whatsoever. I think this is gonna be a really good card. Should also be releasing in quarter one of 2026. So we're not too far away from these cards releasing and you might be asking the question, should I wait to purchase them? And honestly, I'll tell you this much, if you don't have an RTX 50 series card and you've been considering one and you're not in a rush, I would probably go ahead and wait at this point in time to see if these do end up getting confirmed if you're not again in a rush. However, if you already have an RTX 50 series card, no, I wouldn't buy these cards. I would go ahead and wait for RTX 60 series or AMD's next cards at this point in time. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RTX 50 Super Series is worth waiting for? And do you think they'll actually ship 18 and 24 gigabyte versions of these cards thanks to the new three gigabyte modules that are becoming available and far more affordable? Or do you think that NVIDIA will choose not to release them? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.